I have Maria Cortez uh, with an interpreter, and then I have Julio Montez with an interpreter, and then Kimberly Morales. Uh, Maria Cortez? Sí, muy bu buenas tardes a todos. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es María Cortés. Esta es la como la 15, 14, 13, 10 veces que he estado aquí frente a ustedes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is María Cortés. This is the 15th, 13th or 10th time that I that I am here speaking to you. Um, estoy aquí, soy un miembro de la organización, en representación de la organización Se Hace Camino a Nueva York. Eh, soy un líder en, en el grupo de vivienda. Por eso sé bastante la ley, la ley de vivienda y lo que está sucediendo. I am here as a member of Make the Road New York, and I'm a member leader of the housing group, and I'm very well aware of the rent laws, of the housing laws here in New York. He estado peleando desde el 2001 mi apartamento en el 870 de Bedford Avenue. Eh, toda el área se perdió. Mi pregunta es para ustedes, ¿quieren seguir las estadísticas en los shelter? Porque ustedes pagan más en los shelter que en un apartamento. Charter. Charter. Los shelters. Um, so I have been uh, fighting uh, since 2001 and I live at 870 Bedford Avenue and my question for you is do you still uh, are you all making sure that we have more shelters here yes um, otra cosa es que queremos eh, el abuso es grande porque dicen no harass los caseros están cogiendo entre un 43% a un 50% de ganancias en las rentas que nosotros le estamos pagando y no nos dan servicio. Hay que estar 311, 311, 311, 311 y ni yendo a corte. Los caseros hacen caso. ¿Ok? Lo he vivido en carne propia, lo he vivido con mis compañeros de lucha, con mi gente que está al lado mío. De un 43 a un 50% se están echando al bolsillo los caseros y dicen que pierden. So there's this there's been a lot of abuses towards us and landlords earn about 43 to 50% profit from our rents. Um, and so uh, you know they're they're just not uh, responding to our needs we call 311 we call 311 and we call 311 and nothing happens and even when we go to the courts the landlords aren't listening and so they are really getting the uh, 43 to 50 percent of profits from us uh, otra, otra cosa es que um, por lo menos este le estoy pidiendo otro año más un 0% en aumento de renta 0% ok y que paren ya porque hay una ley de hostigamiento que paren ya el hostigamiento es mucho no nos hostigan no nos hacen otra cosa no hay buyout pero no dan calefacción en invierno no dan agua caliente en invierno no mandan exterminadores a los apartamentos y cuando uno se queja uno da complaint si yo pago mis rentas día a día día a día si yo pago renta, quiero servicios, señores. Y todos los que pagamos renta, servicios y queremos un sitio para vivir. O mi pregunta es, ¿qué los caseros quieren con las personas en Nueva York? Que nos vayamos. Gracias. So I'm asking uh, that there is, I'm requesting that there should be a 0% rent increase. This, the harassment needs to stop and these increases need to stop. We don't get heat, we don't get hot water. Um, you know, uh, the, we don't, I don't understand what the landlords want. Do they want us to get out of here? Do they want us to leave New York? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Gracias. I have I have uh, Julio Montes, Kimberly Morales, 
and then Janice Hamilton. Julio Montez. Did I mix? Did I miss someone? No. He's not here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Julio is not here. Okay. Uh, Kimberly Morales. Here. Welcome. And then followed by Janice Hamilton, and uh, I have A. M. Goodrich or Ann Goodrich. Miss Morales. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Kimberly Morales, and I'm a resident of Sunset Park, Brooklyn. I have lived all my life at 465 46th Street, and I've seen the drastic changes in my neighborhood. These changes have forced old residents out, making it impossible to survive due to the high rent being charged. As a matter of fact, my mother and I constantly went to court during my teenage years because our landlord wanted to charge us double the amount of rent illegally. However, we fought to the end and won, thanks to the help of Neighbors Helping Neighbors. The feeling of being powerless when a landlord tries their best to kick out their tenants, it's impossible to explain. Especially being that the reason they kick us out is to remodel these apartments and rent it for more to those who are willing to pay the overpriced amount. I am here today to talk to you about a rent roll rollback. As a recent Hunter graduate and being unemployed, it is difficult to have my own apartment and therefore I have to live with my mother and three siblings in a two bedroom apartment in order not to be homeless. The cost of living does not reflect New Yorkers' wages. A $15 minimum wage cannot fully cover overpriced rent, food, and bills, including the MTA, which keeps on rising their fares, making it even more difficult for New Yorkers. Now we have Industry City telling us, Sunset Park residents, that they brought us jobs, but in reality, they have not. I try looking for employment in Industry City, and there's barely any openings. They keep on expanding for their own benefits, it is not for the old residents living here. It is important to know that there are people who are forced to have several jobs in order to survive in the city that never sleeps. Mind you, a city that never sleeps, not because we party all day and night, but because we work all day and night to survive. I ask of you all to consider and think about the low income residents who are currently being forced out of their neighborhoods due to rent co constantly skyrocketing because of gentrification. Thank you for your time. I have Janice Hamilton, and then A.M. Goodrich, and then Hal Brill, and then uh, Fabian Bravo. Uh, Ms. Hamilton, yeah. welcome. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. When people think about landlords, I hope they think about me. Some, oh. Oh, sorry. Um, what people think about landlords, I hope they think about me, someone who cares. These buildings, we're on, we're, you know, these rent stabilized buildings um, need constant renovations. They're, they're old and you need to give people quality housing um, to, to recover your costs. The rents are fixed, the taxes are not, bills are nonstop. Some months you're literally in the red. That's the bottom line. And I'm a caring and a good landlord. Um, but uh, we house New York, we're part of the solution. Um, you need to provide quality housing to your tenants, and you need to be able to recover the costs. Um, not all, all landlords are bad, and I'd like you to think about me, someone who cares I'm a good landlord. Thank you. Thank you. I have A.M. Goodrich, Hal Brill, Fabian Bravo, and then uh, Aldine Grant. Yes, good evening, um, anyone. Um, so once again, um, did the, uh, did the, um, we got um, a lot of these tend to be pushed out by price out, but we in the mix of so-called affordable housing crisis, see why. And these crises are not as a joke, this is not uh, real, it's about uh, how the negative effect um, then. So a lot of people do live on welfare, um, that the, the, the people make less of their struggle um, to make and make and meet. The families are being like still living in shelters because of like the high cost of living, and it is the most to be stressed out. So because of like if some parents or force forces them to like to like to get up, go to work, then get home, go to sleep, and wake up the next day and re-energize once again. But the edge the energizers are gone. So um, so as that said, corruption, 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 bribery schemes. The list goes on and on. So all these taxes, all these uh, 
predatory um practices they play around um with, with us and, and, and these tenants around the city they like they were like I've been like so fed up with the unsolicited mail that they bring, bring to us so so resolution is the freeze of rent stop with the corruption cause we cause we fire up and we cannot not take this any longer thank you I have Hal Brill, then Fabian Bravo, and then Aldine Grant, and Gary Simon. Hi, I'm Hal Brill, and I'm, I'm a landlord and uh, trying to maintain uh, over 100 euro buildings, and these rent guideline increases have created long-term rentals with rents way too low to cover my costs. And our costs always rise, net income goes down, real estate taxes, water rates, uh, always increase and I believe the uh, real estate taxes and water rates they need to be decreased and we have suppliers and so su and su need supplies and they always all prices always increase and subcontractor prices increase and regulation of real estate that's increasing too and so is the cost with complying with all the new regulations and larger buildings have benchmark costs and cooling tower co compliance costs and lead paint regulations and bed bugs re remediation so i think that the guidelines board has failed in its mission they have provided in adequate increases for way too long many decades in fact and this has resulted in all long-term tenants have the lowest rents of all all well below subsistent levels multi-generation apartments all too common with the lower rents in the building and, um, and that's why you should institute a vacancy allowance at this uh, this time around especially with the state saying that that's no longer going to be uh, available so i think the progressive uh, agenda of no I increases or minute runs are very wrong and uh, these low rents emphasize the fact that we need increases now we need the highest guideline increase as possible we need a vacancy allowance now and i think the system is skewed against all good landlords and the rent guidelines board has failed in its mission to help the small landlords and it allows only minuscule increases that not get up up with inflation and repair costs and every year we fall further behind the situation obviously can't be rectified overnight but the inter in incremental steps need to be taken immediately such as the highest guideline increases possible Thank you very much. Thank you. I have Fabian Bravo, Aldine Grant, Gary Simon, uh, and Ma Man White Sue. Buenas tardes a todos. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Fabian. Vivo en Sunset Park, en el condado de Brooklyn, Nueva York, y soy miembro de la organización Vecinos Ayudando a Vecinos. El pasado lunes, junio 10 de 2019, un juez de la Corte de Vivienda le sugirió a la dueña del edificio que desestime la demanda que ella puso en contra de nosotros, ya que la demanda no tiene ninguna base fundamental. La demanda es porque supuestamente nosotros no hemos pagado la renta, así que nosotros presentamos las evidencias de los recibos de envío de los money orden y presentamos las evidencias indicando que la dueña firmó las cartas certificadas que nosotros ya le habíamos enviado cada mes. Conclusión, la dueña retuvo los money orden y así usarlos como excusa y llevarnos a la corte de vivienda para sacarnos del edificio. Por cierto, es la tercera vez que antepone una demanda en contra de nosotros en la corte de vivienda. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fabian, and I live in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York. I'm a member of Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Last Monday, June 10th, 2019, a judge of the housing court suggested to, our, to the owner of the building that she dismiss the lawsuit that she filed against us since the demand has no fundamental basis. The claim is because the landlord insists that we have not paid the rent. So we present evidence of the receipt of money orders, and we presented evidence indicating that the landlord signed the certified letters that we had sent to her every month. In conclusion, the owner retained the money order and so used it as an excuse to take us to a housing court to get us out of the building. By the way, it is the third time that the owner has filed a lawsuit against us in the housing court and we have won two cases. Won the, and we have won the cases. 
Además, presentamos más evidencias de las agencias de DHCR y HPD. La agencia de DHCR DHCR encontró que la dueña nos hizo un sobrecargo de renta ilegalmente desde el año 2012. La agencia HPD colocó el edificio en un programa de cumplimiento alternativo AEP y debe de hacer reparaciones lo más antes posible. Con ayuda de vecinos, ayudando a vecinos, hicimos una organización de vecinos que vivimos en el mismo edificio, con el propósito de defendernos del acoso por parte de la dueña y poner presión para que se lleve a cabo las reparaciones de los departamentos y el edificio. On the other hand, we obtained more evidence from DHCR and HPD agencies. DHCR found that the owner made an illegal overcharge for us since 2012. HPD added the building in an alternative enforcement program, AEP, and they and they have to make the repairs as soon as possible. With the help of neighbors, helping neighbors, we made an organization of neighbors that live in the same building with the purpose of defending ourselves from harassment by the owner and putting pressure to carry out the repairs of the apartment and the building. Esta situación es muy tensa emocionalmente y físicamente, y yo he perdido mi trabajo para asistir a corte de vivienda. Tanto mi esposa trabaja seis o siete días a la semana y no tenemos el tiempo suficiente para convivir con nuestros hijos. Estas tácticas son muy comunes por la dueña, pues de esta misma manera ha sacado a inquilinos del edificio, pero nosotros con ayuda de organizaciones como Vecinos Ayudando a Vecinos, Canva y Urban Justin Center, estamos listos para defender nuestros derechos. Thank you. The situation is very tense emotionally and physically and I have lost my job to attend housing court. Meanwhile, my wife works six or seven days a week and we do not have enough to, to, uh, time to play with our children. These tactics are common for the, for the owner because in the same way she has taken tenants out of the building. But with the help of neighbors helping neighbors, Camba and Urban Justice Center, we are ready to defend our rights. <laughs> Apoyo a la voz de mi comunidad. Pedimos una vivienda y libre de, de acoso de los caseros, libre del aumento injustificado en la renta y libre de demandas de evicción injustificadas. Pedimos una vivienda justa y digna para nuestros hijos y los hijos de nuestros hijos. Pedimos, este aument pedimos que este aumento de renta no se vaya destinado a los bolsillos de los caseros. Mejor que este aumento vaya destinado a la educación de mis hijos. No más aumento. Muchas gracias. Gracias. I support the voice of my community. We ask for a home free from harassment of landlords, free from unjustified increase in rent, and free of unjustified eviction claims. We ask for a fair and dignified housing for our children and the children of our children. We ask that this increase in income is not destined to the pockets of the landlords, better that it is destined to the education of our children. No more increases. Thank you. I have Aldine Grant, then Gary Simon, and then Manway Sue. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aldine Grant, and I am a senior that lives at 2619 Bedford Avenue. And I've been living there for nearly 30 years, and my landlord, she bought the building about 15 years ago. And since she bought the building, she makes no repair. While I was working, I'd have to do, fix, do the floor myself. But it, it came to this time, I am not working anymore, I'm retired. And the, the leaking from the ceiling mess up the whole floor. I have to take her to court to, to get the floor to be done and that been dragged out for nearly a year. Every time we go to court and she get a time to fix it, she does not do it, nothing happened. And she continue harassing me. But if, even until now, there are some things that still is not done. So she continue want to raise the rent. Well, it is a rent stabilized um, apartment. So she, she's limited in that area. But the harassment, not doing the things in a timely fashion, it's, it's, 
it's just terrible. And I just cannot understand why she's doing this. And she's doing it to a whole other people because she wants us to move. She wants us, but there's nowhere to go. I am on a fixed income. I do not have money to pay the kind of rent that they are charging now. So I'm asking that you have the, have the, 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 you have the, the opportunity to do something about it, to stop this harassment. There's too much homelessness. When you go in the train, people is sleeping everywhere. And without you doing something about it, I don't know what will happen to us, the, the seniors and the, and the people who cannot afford it. Thank you very much. I have Gary Simon, Manway Tzu, uh, Lisa Mathis and uh, Rodrigo, Ca Rodrigo Camarena. Members of the board, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I resp I'm Ga uh, Gary Simon. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mike Tess, Mike Tess. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Gary Simon, I've, uh, I live in a rent controlled uh, unit. I've been in the Flatbush area for about 40 years. I've seen the rents where I've seen where rent could be paid when my parents are able to pay the rent with one check. Pay the rent, groceries and things like that. Now, hardly anyone can pay their rent with one check. You need like two, three checks to pay the rent. Oh, I'm sorry. I've gone from seeing where my parents were able to pay the rent with one check and take care of other household expenses. Um, now, that's out of the question, unless you have a crazy salary, a six-figure salary. I've seen now where you can hardly afford to pay the rent with two checks. It's hard. But um, uh, in retrospect, I, I, I really request a rent, uh, a 0% rent increase uh, 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 for the reasons stated for the people who spoke before me, right? Um, as well as for the presence of MCIs. MCIs, I don't get it. I understand that, I understand both sides of the coin. Um, landlords run a for-profit business. Um, tenants need a service and they'd like to have equal exchange or, or, or f f fair exchange, right? That doesn't happen now, it's, it's out of control. Um, with the MCIs, to me, it, it, it's, it's kind of crazy where um, you can do repairs to your business, right? And, and, and as a result, tenants have to pay for it in its entirety, and sometimes forever for as long as they own their apartments or rent their apartments. That's ridiculous. That's like going to Starbucks on a regular basis, and when Starbucks decides to, um, to improve on their infrastructure, the customers pay for it out of their pocket. That's, that's ridiculous. Your rent should take care of everything that the landlord has to do with his, his, his building or unit, you know? So where well, landlords are, are, are given bonuses for vacancies. So that means that they have an some of them have an incentive to get you out. If you have a low, if you're paying a lower rent or below market rent, that's similar to paying a cop to arrest people. They have incentive to arrest you now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just don't get it. Um, I can understand my chicken scratch here. Yeah, Thank you. A moment. Um, uh, da -da. Thank you. Your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, but. Uh, Again, if you guys, you guys have the power, I mean, rent freezes are part of the problem, but you guys have the power. It makes a big difference on people who, who, who can hardly afford to pay their rent. If you guys can see, see through it to um, freeze the rents, as a matter of fact, I think rents should be frozen for as long as landlords are making considerable profit. Thank you very Thank much. You. I have Manway Tzu with an interpreter, and then I have... Lisa Mathis, Rodrigo Camarena, Samantha Bravo, and Nora Huertero. Hello everyone, um, I live in Manhattan um, and I'm here today because I received this report. New York City has 
嘅 family 咧已經 lost 咗個低收入家庭嘅嗰個 program 入邊。Um, I've lived in in Manhattan for 28 years, and in this report, it says that New York has lost lost over 300,000 affordable units of housing. 我又聽到咧有好多人咧已經入咗嗰個 shelter 入邊。Oh, and as we've heard from a lot of people here, a lot of people have entered shelters. 咁啊，我都好心痛。咁我有一個問題咧，就係，嗯，我喺唐人街住，嗰啲一聽到有 building 嘅 owner 咧，佢好開心。但係而家嚟講咧，有好多新嘅 owner 咧，好唔開心。嗯。And I'm very heartbroken about the fact that people have to live in shelters. And so I live in Chinatown, and um, people and with new landlords, um, that is bad news. Yeah. And old landlords in Chinatown are very happy. 因為佢有 building 咧，所以好開心啊 ！Because there um are buildings, yeah. yeah. I never heard the old landlord have problem, but the new landlord have problem. Okay, sorry. Um, 我上一次嚟見證過，因為我嘅新嘅 landlord， 所以上次。啊、um, ！整個 boiler 再燒咗個 building， 就三次嘅報個警嘅啦。上一次我已經被報過。Uh, last time I testified, the new landlord was trying to fix the boiler and actually、um, started. How many? They have four. 你哋叫個三次警察嚟，即係 fire department。And the fire department had to come. 今次咧係一個新嘅 landlord， 佢。好好，乜嘢都整，唔整嘅嘢佢都整埋。And so now there's a new landlord who、um, does all the repairs, and even repairs that don't need to be done are done. 我哋好开心。Um, 我知道新嘅 landlord 系用咗好多钱，好多钱买呢个 building， 佢哋好辛苦，佢要俾银行。我哋都好开心。不過咧，而家有張表咧，有張有張表咧就 send 過嚟俾我哋啦。We were so happy, and we know that the landlord has spent a lot of money on this building, and we were happy about the repairs. But then、um, the bill has come to us. <笑>所以咧，唔係淨係每一年嘅升租，佢新嘅 landlord 咧係諗好多方法。例如，我哋每個 apartment 每個門口都有 camera， 但係我唔知後邊咧，我個窗咧係冇冇冇個機嘅，唔知佢有冇個 camera， 所以咧佢係佢係諗到依樣嘢，但係對我哋嚟講咧係唔需要，同埋即係佢上次講我哋走咧，就攞依啲錢落去 park 度。Thank you. Um, so the um, the increases are not just the yearly rent increases. The landlords get really creative in finding ways to increase the rent, including they installed cameras at every entrance of the apartments, and we don't even know if there are also cameras in the back staircases、um, by our windows. And these things are not necessary and not wanted,、um, and so it's a way that the landlords can increase our rent. Thank you. Thank you. I have Lisa Mathis,、uh, and then Rodrigo Camarena, Samantha Bravo, and、um, Nora Huertero. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for listening to my testimony. My name is Lisa Mathis. I live at 80 New York Avenue in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. I've lived in that. I grew up in that building, but I had my own apartment in that building for the past 15 years. Have two adult children. 
My daughter cannot afford to come back to New York. She got her degree from SUNY Albany. She has to stay in Albany because she can afford to live there. She can't afford to live in New York. My son, who's 28, still lives with me because although he is a civil servant wor working for Board of Elections, his salary does not allow him to afford an apartment in our neighborhood. Um, I work in the court system, also a civil servant, for 20 years. Um, if my apartment was not rent stabilized, I could not continue to live in the neighborhood that I grew up in, that I went to school in, um, that I raised my children in, that I know the population, I know my neighbors, I know the store owners. By that same token, it's an eight family building. The landlord harassed the five other tenants out of the building. We went through almost three winters without heat. That landlord still continues to harass us. I've been in court with my aunt who still lives in the building and a neighbor who's still in the building. And um, 2018, I was in court every month for the whole year with one of us because the landlord continues to try to get us out. The landlord does all kinds of tricks they won't cash the checks and they say we haven't paid um, luckily because I work for the court system I'm able to go to court and I understand how it works to do to do these things but there are a lot of people who can't my two sister-in-laws are both school teachers for over 30 years because of one for preferential rent and one because the rent got too high no longer live in Brooklyn, although they still teach in Brooklyn. So their commutes went from 20 minutes to an hour and a half to almost two hours because of the rent. So I ask, I implore, I, I think it's imperative that the rents are not increased. What you're doing is you're killing communities and neighborhoods. When you look at my building, the other five apartments, because the landlord was able to destabilize those apartments, the, those apartments, my rent was 1200 um, the rents in those apartments are over $4,000. So you don't have families living in there. You have uh, four and five people who are not related living. So you have a high turnaround. You're not maintaining your tax base. You're not maintaining your community. You're not growing families in the neighborhood. So all these things affect you. If you don't have a home, if you don't have a place to stay, you, you can't ensure your health coverage, you can't ensure that you get the right medication, you don't have a, a place for your clothes. I volunteer in the school system, and I think that um, it's, it's horrible that there's so many homeless children leaving shelters to go to school. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Rodrigo Camar Camar uh, Camarena is right here. And then followed by Samantha Bravo. Welcome. Hi. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good, thank you. Good. My name is Rodrigo Camarena. Um, I come to you as a longtime advocate for Sunset Parks immigrant and working class communities, a Brooklyn tenant, and a former member of this very board. Um, thanks to the tenant movement, as we speak, legislators in Albany are working to renew and strengthen New York State's laws, rent laws. <laughs> This historic deal will finally end high rent vacancy deregulation and the 20% vacancy bonus that incentivized intimidation for decades. It will prevent landlords from using the preferential rent loophole to increase rents, make MCIs and IAIs temporary and finally cap them, and finally recognize that all of New York State is undergoing a housing emergency and making universal rent control a possibility for all New Yorkers. Together, these changes to our rent laws will help reverse a lot of wrongs. Now, while the news of this historic deal is still being worked out and it's being brokered in Albany, it's a positive development for all New Yorkers, but it comes after a loss of nearly 150,000 regulated units over the last 25 years and the displacement of hundreds of thousands of, the, of New Yorkers during the same period. How many families did vacancy to control push into homelessness because of corruption and inaction in Albany? How many parents had to choose between putting food on the table and covering the costs of an unnecessary M MCI in perpetuity? How many children did we force into homelessness or insecure housing because of the landlord's use of a pre preferential rent agreement? Tonight, I'm here to ask that each of you do your part to right the wrongs of the past by stopping the bleeding and voting for a rent freeze or rollback on the final vote. And I know that many of you don't think that the strengthening of the rent laws and this historic deal should play a role in your decision on how to vote. 
Your mandate is to construct or simulate normal or fair rent levels in a market that's driven by scarcity. I'm here to let you know that your humanity, your values, and the many tools of your intellect also play a role in your decision. To the public members of the board, hi. Um, you represent the general public. David is a very nice person, and I'm sure that he's doing a terrific job, I'm sure. But he's not here to whip your vote or communicate the desires of the deputy mayor or city hall. As public members, you represent all of us and have been appointed to this board because of your professional background and knowledge of economic development issues. You have your own decision to make, you have your own voice, and you have your own vote. Do the right thing. Be on the right side of history. Thank you. I have Samantha Bravo, then uh, Nora Huertero, and then Gordon Lee. Good evening, my name is Samantha Bravo, and I'm 14 years old. I am from the organization Neighbors Helping Neighbors. I've been coming to speak here for four years, and I'm not only the voice of my family, but I'm the voice of every New Yorker facing a rent problem. Among these New Yorkers are children, the most vulnerable in this rent increase. Nathan is my younger brother, and he is currently eight years old and does not have the opportunity to have special moments with my mother because she works every day for nine or more hours. And she's too tired to play, too tired to play with my brother. How can you let young kids suffer the most because of your selfish acts? Is the money so important to you that you let parents work long hours to have enough money to pay rent with no time for their children? This is unacceptable. These children are the future of New York, and by limiting the time they spend with their family, you're teaching them that New York only cares about money, when in reality, it should be that New York cares about the needs of everybody. One need especially is a rollback of rent. Take this weight off these hardworking New Yorkers who deserve time with their families. Think about these struggling tenants for once and ignore money, because right now, all these tenants n are thinking about is a way to have a Happy vacation as, as a family. Thank you for listening, and please think about your family and how would you feel being in this situation. Thank you. Thank you. I have Nora Hortero, and then Gordon Lee, and then Judith Thompson. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Uh, junta Regladora, mi nombre es Nora Hortero. Vivo en el 430-61 Street. Brooklyn, Good afternoon to the regulatory board. My name is Nora Huertero, and I live at 430 61st Street, Brooklyn, in Sunset Park. Trabajo de 6 a 7 días a la semana. Soy cabeza de familia. No puedo darme el lujo de faltar a mi trabajo. No tengo días de enfermedad ni vacaciones. I work six to seven days a week. I am the head of my family, and I don't have the luxury to miss a day of work because I don't have sick days or vacations. Tengo tres hijos, 20, 14, y 8 años. Este último casi no lo veo. Ni disfruto con él ya que tengo que moverme de un trabajo a otro. Y casi siempre llego tarde. I have three children, 20, 14, and eight years old. And this last one, I almost never see him. And I never get to enjoy him because I have to keep moving from one job to another and almost always get home late. Sé que muchos de ustedes han apoyado un aumento. Ustedes saben cuántas horas las personas que no tenemos una profesión, tenemos que trabajar más para pagar una renta. I know that many of you have supported an increase. Do you know how many more hours people like us who don't have a career need to work in order to pay for a higher rent? Ustedes los que votan por un aumento, saben lo que es no ver a tus hijos un día, no poder jugar o platicar con él? All of you who are voting for an increase, do you know what it's like to not see your, your children for a day and not being able to play or talk with him? Este año he perdido días de trabajo, todos gracias a la dueña, ya que nos llevó a esa corte. Sigue diciendo que le debemos renta, 
ya mostramos las pruebas de los pagos y ella sigue con lo mismo. Ya son seis meses en corte. This year I have missed work all because of the landlord or the owner. She has taken us to court again. She keeps saying that we owe her rent. We already showed her the proof of the payment, but she continues with the same. It's already been six months in court. Me gustaría poder salir con mis hijos y disfrutarlos más. Hay un problema de vivienda y ustedes lo saben. Aquí me preguntes a ustedes. Uh, ¿Son parte de ustedes de la solución o son parte del problema? I would like to spend time with my children and enjoy them more. There's a housing problem in New York and you know it. And here's my question to you all. Are you part of the solution or are you part of the problem? No más aumentos. Si no es ahora, ¿cuándo? Si no es ustedes, ¿quién? Gracias. No more increases. If it's not now, when? If it's not you, then who? Thank you. Thank you. I have Gordon Lee, then Judith Thompson, then Leslie Jones. Good night. I'm Mr. Gordon Lee from right here in Brooklyn, which you can also call me. I'm Greg, if Gordon is too difficult. Now, for a long time, you know, there are things that I have had a problem with, including landlords and people who think like them, who think seem to think that we're supposed to always have money and give it to them as much as they want, when they want it. You know, which is why they they charge these um such high rents. Now I am also one of the people who don't have the kind of money that they're charging. I'm presently low income, but the woman that was speaking up here, she was right. You know, some some of y'all think that we're low income because we don't work, that we party all day or night. We don't party all day or night, and we do work. Even if we don't work, we're always out there looking for work. I don't walk streets and drink beer with my friends all day, and I don't care at all if you if you all don't believe it or not. And I'm serious. Anyway, you know I've been depressed for several years, and one of them, the reason is the landlords. People think like them, and. Again, they think we're supposed to always have money and give it to them as much as they want, when they want. And I, we have to figure out where we're going to get that money from. And, uh, yeah, we got to figure out where we're going to get that money from. And it's not just frustration, it's intimidation involved. And I know it's because they think we just have money to spend and someone is paying our way. Well... Nobody's paying our way. And I also have to, last but final, I have to send a stress, a message to everybody. Let's talk about how landlords are not accountable. They can do what they want. And, and that they're insinuating that the landlords are above the law. Well, I insist, I'm serious. Landlords are not above the law and they are not kings. More people want authority figures, including landlords, to be above the law and made kings. They're not above the law. They are not kings. Thank you. Anna. Anna. I have Judith Thompson, Leslie Jones, and Melanie Wang. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Judith Thompson, and I live in the Flatbush area. And I just want to say, I'm a little bit nervous, but I want to say to you, naked we came and naked we go. I live in the Flatbush area with my dad and siblings in the same apartment. My mother and father together as 14 children. 14 children. Some are here. All of us are, came from back 
own. And some are here. Some are still over there struggling, and we are here. I want to say, everywhere the food pantry is, I find them. Because I cannot afford to pay the rent, and I cannot afford to buy the food as I want to. I want to say, my dad never really works here, so he only gets SSI. So we have to band together to try and pay the rent. My mother passed away 10 years ago, and it's very hard on me and my siblings, and we all try to live together as a family. I cannot afford to rent a place on my own. I don't have any kids of my own, but with my little salary, I'm a caregiver living on $15 minimum wage, and sometimes I hardly get 40 hours. You hardly get a 40 hour job. So when I check up my week's pay, that's nowhere near going on my own. I have to live there for a long time. My dad is 90. His name is on the lease because it transferred from my mother. Our name is not on the lease. And I'm afraid that if he dies, next month is his birthday, the 2nd of July. And I'm afraid that if he dies, we might end up in the shelter because we cannot afford the rent. I am begging you, please, to take this into consideration because there's too much homeless people in New York, in the city. I am begging you to consider us as tenants. We need a rent decrease, not a rent, rent increase. A decrease is good for us at this time. Thank you Thank all. Thank you. I have Leslie Jones, Melanie Wang, Melissa Ortiz, and Verna Utse. And, and just a reminder, if you're here to speak, but you haven't checked in with our desk in the front in the lobby, please do so. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, just gonna make Este, si está aquí para dar su testimonio, un recordatorio de por favor inscribirse a la entrada si quiere dar su testimonio esta noche. Gracias. Gracias. Ms. Jones, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm a property owner. Since we're telling stories, I'd like a little extra time to tell my story. My grandmother brought this building, a six-family building in Brooklyn, Bedford, Stuyvesant. She was a Christian woman. She collected rent, $129, $189, $357, and $547. When she passed away, before she passed away, I took her to a lawyer and got the building registered and did everything what we were supposed to do. She passed away. I'm 67 years old. I'm still working to supplement that building. The last tenant I had, I had bad tenants. I know there's good tenants and there's bad tenants. But I had bad tenants who destroyed, broke up everything. So now I got three good tenants. The three are gone. I took out a loan. I'm investing in the building. I'm upgrading electrical. The three tenants that I have, they did understand that I was doing this work. They have nice apartments now, granite countertops. I don't have granite countertops in my house. Okay? And for you to arbitrarily say that you're not going to raise the rent increases with all the new laws that's being passed now, no MCI. I couldn't get the MCI on the, um, the electrical because unfortunately my electrician passed away and the time frame had elapsed. So I had to do apartment individually. I did not throw my tenants out. I explained to all of them what I'm going to do is fix up one apartment, swing you over, fix up that apartment, bring you back. They did pay the increases. I spent over $40,000 on three apartments. I can only claim $200. Now that's sad. I still have to pay the loan that I took out to fix up the building. And a lot of people tell me, you're stupid walk away, take the money and run. No, my grandmother worked hard for that building and I want to work hard for that building. I take pride, I am not a slum landlord. And I resent the fact that the city of New York, the state and the federal government can tell me what to do, but they let everybody else run their business, do what they want to do. And I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I get no assistance from DHCR, I get no heap, I get no assistance. 
Thank you. Thank you. I have Melanie Wang, uh, Melissa Ortiz, Verna Utsi. Welcome. I'm Verna Utsi. Uh, and I live at. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, Melanie, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, you are Verna. Yes. Okay, hello, Verna. Um, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I kind of want to look at this another way. I've been in uh, 95 Linden Boulevard for a very long time, uh, over 40 years. And I have seen oh, the, la the, la the current landlord, they've tried, they're trying to fix the building up and to make it look good because they want to um, fix up the apartments and get more people to pay a higher rent, whatever. Um, I recognize that landlords have bills too, just like me and you. But I want you to, con I want the landlords, especially if they're landlords here, to consider this. I've been there over 40 years, and I have been like a super in that building. I have monitored all the craziness, the young boys coming in and messing up the place and destroying it. I have called the cops, I have called the landlord. I have, I'm, I'm a grandmother, I talk to the young people, etc., etc. I want the face of the community to stay as it was, where there's older people on fixed income can afford to stay where they're at. We are needed in the neighborhoods. That's what makes a community. We are needed. I'm talking about us senior citizens. When you get rid of people who are on fixed income, what do you have? A bunch of people who are coming in and out, they don't really care. They, they, as, and, and I've been noticing that a lot of the tenants that are coming in, they're not staying very long, okay? So maybe this is good for the landlord. I don't know, but it's changing the face of the community and it's not gonna benefit them in the long run. Maybe in the short run, but not in the long run because community is being destroyed. I have helped, I kept tabs on all that's happening in the building. I call the cops, I talk to the landlord. I, we look out for each other because we all know each other, the seniors in that building. We call the authorities, we talk to the landlords. We are, I am a caregiver for my grandchildren and for others, other children in the neighborhood, in the building and in the neighborhood. We need the elderly, in, and the elderly cannot, if you're on fixed income, you cannot pay all these increases. And where are you gonna go? If someplace else is the same thing, where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna run to? There's nowhere to run. You've got to stand, and if people are fighting, it's because they can't, f so they can't run, because there's nowhere to run. You know, I like the building that I live in. I've been there for a long time, and I work with the landlord. There's always two sides to every story, and yes, us tenants have a, side to, a part to play too. So, but I've done my part. Thank you. I have been doing my part. Thank and you. We need, we need housing that we can afford in this city. Thank you. Thank you. I have Melanie Wang, Melissa Ortiz, um, Hin Chen. Uh, if it's agreeable to the board, I might switch back and forth between Mandarin and English. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, my name is Melanie Wong. I'm the Chinatown Tenants Union lead organizer at CAV, Organizing Asian Communities in Chinatown. We work with rent stabilized tenants in the neighborhood. So, I was Wang Xiaojie. I was the Taiwan Jie Zhu Ke Xie Hui the Zhu Zhe Zhe. We are CAV Zhu Zhe in Taiwan Jie, with Zhu Jing Wen Ding's Zhu Ke Hei Zuo. Um, I'm here today to call for a rent freeze. So, I was in the mood to just ask for a rent um, and I want to talk specifically about the rent law package on the table tomorrow in Albany um, because I know it makes this year very different from than previous years. Um, the rent law package rightfully eliminates many loopholes for rent increases that landlords have been able to abuse for years, and it is a tremendous win for the tenant movement. Can I, can I get some? <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's tenant power that won that package. However, this package, when it does pass into law, will do little to provide immediate relief for those who are already rent burdened. Okay, so the loopholes that they're eliminating, like the vacancy bonus and the IAIs, those are primarily applied to apartments that are currently vacant or where tenants have been forced out, right? And something like vacancy decontrol only applies to apartments where the rent is already above the 2700 threshold, right? And that's already expensive enough. 
This bill, as important as it is, does little to relieve the fundamental affordability issue that many of the people that I work with are facing, that many of the people in this room are facing. And for working class rent burden communities, it does not go far enough. It will not provide the immediate relief that folks are coming to you today asking for. Hopefully, in the long run, the rent law package will stem what I consider to be the most evil aspect of all this, which is the financialization of New York City's housing stock, right? That's not just a New York City phenomenon. That's a national phenomenon from Bismarck to Boston. It's changing the economics of our housing market in the entire country, right? And it means that predatory equity landlords in New York City are systematically buying up rent regulated housing right with loans taken out from banks without a conscious and and deregulating those units often illegally right and this process i can tell you as a tenant organizer who works with people facing eviction every single day it is a violence that is acted upon working class communities for profit it is unconscionable thank you it also destroys small landlords ability to compete in a market where the property taxes are going up and up and up so that's why the rent law package is essential, but I also want to make it clear, especially to the public members, that you should not mistake this for immediate rent relief for those among us who are the most rent burdened. Thank the you. issues facing New York City and our Chinatown members, the Chinatown tenants, remain, and it is a moral imperative that you vote for a rent freeze on June 25th. Thank you. Thank you. I have Melissa Ortiz and uh, Kim Chen. Got to bring this mic down. All right. My name is Melissa Del Valle Ortiz, and I hope you can hear me in the back. I don't have a speech. I didn't have one written, but I wrote it as I was listening here today. I want to be clear that I'm speaking for myself and not for my employer. First, bravo to all of our activists here today. Neighbors Helping Neighbors, Impact, Make the Road, CAAV, Fifth Avenue Committee, all of them that are here that are representing Brooklyn residents across the city and across the state. With so much development in Brooklyn, New York, I am disheartened that this room is not filled to the rafters, that the media is not here today. But I understand that we are upstate making it happen, letting people know that we have a voice. And so we're on both sides of the town. My mother is going on 70 years old. She's a retired bank employee from Bankers Trust. She lives in Bushwick, and with her retirement money, she's still working as a porter at 70 to pay her rent. She's sorting trash, she's cleaning buildings, she has 20 buildings under her belt. 20 buildings as a 70 year old woman who's supposed to be in her golden retirement years. That's how she's making ends meet. I have friends who are disabled whose landlords are harassing them out of their affordable apartments. As a housing activist, I was able to acquire a position with an elected official as a housing and community liaison. I am in a unique position as a federal employee. We get all of the cases, federal, project-based Section 8, senior citizen, 202 housing, shelters, rent stabilized, SCREE, DREE, all of it, you name it. And I can tell you from my experience, in these two years that I have been working with these residents, Brooklyn and throughout the New York City deserve every opportunity to preserve their housing. I appreciate the owner's position of limited means, but this is at the cost of doing, but this is the cost of doing business here in New York City. HCR has programs for what for for landlords, one particular, the weatherization assistance program that is not mandated that is not mandated for landlords to use for renovations that will restrict them from pay from increasing a tenant's rent. Why aren't we talking about that? Why aren't we mandating weatherization in buildings before they apply for MCI increases? Right. Let's have that conversation. Yeah. New windows, new boilers, insulation, new refrigerators, new lighting, all of that for half the price. This woman is incurring $40,000 in loans. Why? I'm not done. But this they can do that. We need you as a board need to sit down and you need to discuss what opportunities are here where we can meet the road in the middle where we can help tenants where we can help landlords what put, what programs are there available for both sides so that this way we protect the tenants and the landlords. They are there. We can do it. 
Let's give it up. I want to see you. I want to see you. Make the roll, everybody. Let's make it happen. Thank you. I have Kim Chen, and uh, Kim Chen is the last person who's, who's registered. So if anyone else would like to um, speak, please go to the lobby and register. Um, otherwise, we will uh, take a brief recess uh, to wait for more speakers. I know. Sure. Um, okay, esta es la última persona que está inscrita para testificar hasta ahora, así que si no se han inscrito, por favor inscríbanse ya en la mesa de la entrada. Si no se inscribe nadie, entonces vamos a tomar un corto receso, pero de todas maneras se pueden inscribir. 大家好,接下来陈生生他是最后就是登机会说证的人,所以如果有任何人还想就是讲他们的那个讲词,那也请你去外出去登记,那如果没有其他人登记的话,那委员会他们等会也会做小会做出去休息。大家好,晚上好。
I have to work 12 hours a uh, 12 hours a day and 72 hour, two hours a week um, in order to provide for my children and also to afford this high rent. My purpose for coming here today is to ask for a rent freeze. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to recess for 10 minutes, um, and then we'll, we're, we'll check in to see if we get more speakers. Does anybody want to speak who has not yet spoken? Uh, if so, maybe raise your hand and then go up to the lobby. Uh, anybody? Any takers? Vamos a tomar una pausa de 10 minutos para ver si se inscribe alguien más para testificar. Pero mientras tanto, ¿alguien está interesada o interesado en testificar? Por favor, levante la mano. Ok, y se puede inscribir en la mesa del frente. Ok, all right, we, we, we'll recess for 10 minutes. Thank you. Entonces una pausa de 10 minutos.